So my questions are, what does representation mean? When can we say we've achieved it? And is this even the goal that we should be aspiring to in order to fix a very real problem? All right, so this video is gonna be a little bit more emotional than some of my other videos. I apologize in advance, but I've just had these thoughts simmering under the surface for so long, and I feel like I just need to vent them out of my system, or I think I might actually explode. Of course, I'm still gonna to try to be as balanced and empathetic as possible, since I've repeatedly identified these qualities as traits that I aspire to in my other videos. Spoiler alert, I failed. What up, Editor Fee here. So I say this later on in the video, but there are extremely valid reasons why the opposite side of this argument is on that side, and those reasons deserve to be acknowledged and explored. Unfortunately, I don't do that in this video, which by definition means that I failed to empathize with that side, and I just felt like I needed to put a disclaimer out and call myself out for failing to live up to my ideals. So if you want to see a more balanced take on this topic, then feel free to tune into my next video on the subject. In any case, I still stand by everything I say in this video. It's just that by definition, it's not very balanced or empathetic. I'm pretty definitively on one side of the argument here and I make it very well known. And so if you're interested in seeing why I disagree with that side, then feel free to keep watching. But in any case, back to the video. But even so, I feel so much more emotional about this topic than I felt about some of the other topics that I've talked about in my videos. So if I come off as too heated or aggressive, again, I apologize in advance. But anyway, let me start at the beginning. So unless you live under a rock, you've probably heard about Amazon's Lord of the Rings TV show. And unless you live under a bigger rock, you've probably heard that this show is controversial to say the least. Now, I've actually spoken a little bit about this controversy in my external validation part three video, where I talked about a comment I'd made about how I personally felt about one aspect of the show. But the point of that video was just to demonstrate how I'd let the validation that I got from that comment go to my head, despite me being aware of the dangers of external validation. In any case, I didn't really go into the specifics of that comment, but that's exactly what I'm gonna do here because I just feel the need to expand on this. Apparently writing it down just wasn't enough. So I don't know if I mentioned this in the other video, but I had made that comment in response to Sofia Navetti, who plays Disa in the Rings of Power TV show, basically going on a press tour for the show and in every single interview, exclaiming the virtues of finally having a black female character, specifically a dwarf, represented in Tolkien's world and the significant and momentous nature of this happening. This is the first time that we see a woman and the first time that see we see a black woman in this area and this world and these works of Tolkien you know this is a ne this is necessary this is a revolutionary moment for cinematic and uh, and television now considering that her character plays a pretty minor role in the show amazon deciding to put her front and center during the press tour is a bit suspicious but that's a different topic for a different time basically her role here was to proudly proclaim that black people were finally getting representation in Tolkien's world and i lost it clearly as you can see from my comment i just got so tired of being told that i finally have characters that i can relate to just because they have the same skin color as me as if i couldn't relate to boromir or frodo or aragorn or sam or any other member of the fellowship i've already talked about how and why the lord of the rings is my favorite trilogy of of all time. The fact that everybody in those movies was white never stopped me from sympathizing with, empathizing with, or relating to any of those characters. Why? Because the color of their skin was literally the least important aspect of their characters. What was important about them was their individual and collective struggles. That's what I related to. I related to Frodo's will to do what was right regardless of what that might mean for him. And I also related to his weaknesses and his inability to see the task through without the help of those around him. I related to Sam, his prejudice, and his unwavering friendship. I related to Aragorn's recognition and fear of his own weaknesses, and his journey to overcome them in order to reach his true potential and realize his destiny. I related to Arwen's unyielding and steadfast belief in the strength and valor of mankind, even though it meant standing against her own kin and sacrificing her own future in order to maintain this belief. And of course, I related to Boromir his failure, his sacrifice, and his redemption. These were the traits that I saw in those characters. These were the traits that I idolized and still aspire to, to this day. The absolute last trait that I was concerned about when watching these movies was the color of these characters' skin. There was no part of me that watched Boromir sacrifice his life to save his friends and thought, oh, well, I could never redeem myself in such a noble fashion because he's white and I'm black. There was no part of me that watched Sam fight off a giant spider for his friend who had just 
spurned him, by the way, and thought, well, I could never demonstrate such loyalty in a friendship because he's white and I'm black. There was no part of me that saw Aragorn overcome his weaknesses and rise to his potential and thought, well, I could never meet the expectations required of me because he's white and I'm black. And I am so thankful that these discussions around representation weren't around at the time, telling me flat out that these characters weren't for me because they didn't look like me. That would have completely destroyed my worldview. I would have started only seeking relatability in people that look like me, relying on complexion and skin color to establish bonds of friendship instead of personal affinities and similarities in nature. I'm so thankful that these movies taught me early on that every being, be it a hobbit, a dwarf, an elf, a wizard, or even a tree, has traits that I can relate to, understand, and empathize with. I'm so thankful that they taught me that skin color was not an indicator of whether or not I could relate to someone else's experiences. Because thanks in large part to these movies, the current emphasis on representation has no effect on that worldview whatsoever. And based on the rhetoric, I believe that's exactly what it's trying to do. I believe that this ideal of representation, at least in its current form, is a double-edged sword. This is going to sound stupid, and maybe it is, but I still think it's important to say. When you create characters for a group of people, you create characters for only that group of people. Again, I know it sounds dumb, but hear me out. Because say what you want about Hollywood so white or anything concerning that phenomenon. But at the end of the day, the characters that Hollywood was creating weren't only for white people. Luke Skywalker was for everybody. Neo was for everybody. Iron Man was for everybody. These characters weren't created so only white people could see themselves in them. They were created so that all of us could see ourselves in them regardless of our race. And that's part of the reason why you have people from all identities relating to and even going so far as to dress up as or cosplay as these white characters. It's part of the reason why they can make an entire show about a young Pakistani girl who idolizes a white superhero. Tell me, do you see that story being told in reverse anytime soon? A story about a young white boy who idolizes Ironheart or Reva from Star Wars or this version of Batwoman? Even if they did want to tell that story, it wouldn't be long before people started to demonize it for cultural appropriation because again, those characters weren't for white people. They were for us. And so it's no surprise when white audiences can't relate to these characters. And it's no surprise that they have no inclination to go and watch the stories of the characters that they've been explicitly told weren't for them. And I just think it does more damage than good to have these characters written to represent a specific demographic because you limit that character's scope, reach, and potential impact. I just don't understand how you can expect people outside of your target demographic to relate to a character that you've specifically told them isn't for them. And so as I've said, I do not believe in the ideal of representation, at least in its current form. I believe it seeks to isolate and pander to specific demographics, focusing on surface level identity to force relatability, and by doing so, teaches us to seek that relatability only in people that look like us. and no Nowhere else. And in certain cases, it completely destroys already pre-established, fully functioning worlds. I didn't need black characters to relate to the original Lord of the Rings story, and I don't need them to relate to this new story. And so if that is your only justification for bringing them in, then I believe your justification to be shallow and destructive. And my question is just, where does it end? Is representation even an achievable goal, or does it just exist subjectively in the minds of those who pursue it? Because at present, black people are 13% of the population in America, and we are 11% of the population in Hollywood. So will the calls for representation end when we achieve that 13% mark? Or is it when we get at least 13% representation in each individual movie? Because if we go past that 13% mark, aren't we now overrepresented in the industry? Isn't that what we are accusing white people of? And I'm sorry if you think I'm being facetious, but if you think I am, then let's look at law enforcement. There are still calls for more black representation in the police force as a solution to police brutality. But black people already make up 13% of the police force, and yet police brutality still exists, sometimes at the hands of those black police officers. So my questions are, what does representation mean? When can we say we've achieved it? And is this even the goal that we should be aspiring to in order to fix a very real problem? I don't believe that there's an agreed upon end goal here, which suggests that the destination exists subjectively in the minds of the people who want to see more of it, making them the arbiters to decide whether or not this goal has been achieved. And when multiple people or groups have varying definitions of the end goal, then the goal itself loses viability. And so representation, in my opinion, is the wrong rallying cry for, again, a very real problem. I do not deny that more diversity in storytelling will facilitate an environment where better, 
more interesting, never before seen stories can thrive. And so I advocate for different stories to be told, featuring different types of people from all over the world. But that environment should be the objective, in my opinion. Yes, tell more stories from other continents, Africa, Asia, South America, etc., where it makes sense for different ethnicities to be the focal point. And no, don't do this in the name of representation. Do it because those stories are interesting, powerful, and deserve to be told. Create characters whose identities are tied up in traits beyond their skin color so that everybody can relate to, aspire to, and emulate them. But please, what we need to stop doing is taking already existing worlds and shoehorning various minorities into them in the name of a representation. All you're doing is telling people that they can and should only relate to people that look like them while simultaneously destroying the worlds of the original artists for your own purposes. And frankly, as a black man, the ideal of representation does not represent me. But in any case, I think that's gonna be it for this one. If you made it this far, thank you so much for indulging me. Again, this one was a lot more emotional. I wanted to keep it balanced, but I just had to get this off my chest. I'll probably make a part two discussing why this has become such a hot talking point over the past couple of years, as well as the justification for representation as an ideal existing in the first place. Because I do think that there are incredibly valid reasons reasons why people are calling for it. There is validity to the idea that there should be more stories about different types of people. And I do not mean to downplay that. Again, I don't refute that point. I just don't believe that this ideal will get us where we want to go. I just think that this is the absolute worst way to go about trying to solve a very real problem. But anyway, I'll save all that for part two. And so again, thank you for watching. I hope this made sense and please feel free to let me know if it didn't so that I can try to clear up any misconceptions. But with that said, I wish you all the very best going forward. Take care of yourself and I will see you in the next one. Peace.